Okay, I've done lots and lots of knitting and my socks are now long enough to reach the heel line on my cardboard foot. You see I've got my cardboard foot in there and it's just reaching the heel line. So I'll get my foot out. Um, just to show you what I was talking about with the jog here, if you look on this side of the sock, you see these little steps of two stitches. So like I said, if the jog bothers you, then um, there are many, many videos on YouTube, I'm sure, about how to avoid the jog, but don't bother me. My way of disguising it is to walk on it. <laughs> okay, so um, to mark for the heel. Now what's going to happen when we come back to put the heel in is we're going to take out one line of stitching on this side of the sock, which is, you know, my tail's here. It's the side with all the jogs. Um, now since I ended up doing regular stripes, I'm going to put my heel in the middle row of a stripe. My stripes were seven rows, so that'll be on the fourth row. So this so I've knit three rows, so this fourth row will be the row that gets taken out to put the heel there. So before I start knitting it, I'm going to mark the first stitch in the row with one of these, what's called a locking stitch marker. Now if you don't have these, you can get a darning needle and some contrasting um, wool and just thread a little loop of wool through and tie it in a secure knot to use as a marker if you don't have a stitch marker. But I've got these little jobbies so I'm going to I'm going to go make sure I'm right in the middle of the shot. I'm going to go right into the stitch as it sits on the needle and then I'm going to close up the marker on that sock and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other sock. This is not strictly necessary, it just makes it easier when we get to the heel, so I always do it. So that first stitch there, being careful not to pierce the stitch itself. Do you see I've just got the marker through it? And now I'm going to knit this row and I'm going to knit to the middle of the row. Now because I've got 22 stitches, there is no middle stitch, so I'll put it in the 20. In, sorry, in the, the 11th, 10th or 11th stitch, it doesn't really matter. Somewhere in the middle of the row. Okay, so I've marked the first stitch of the row, so now I'm going to knit to the middle of this row. I'll just knit that, ignore the marker. So because I've got 22 stitches, I'm going to knit 11 stitches. Somewhere in the middle of the row, it doesn't have to be exact. Five, she said counting. <laughs> and when I get there, I'm going to mark that stitch as well. Now mark the stitch that you've just knit, not that stitch. That stitch is in the previous row because it hasn't been knit yet. That's quite important. So mark the stitch you've just knit on your right hand needle. And then knit to the end. So I'm going to knit to the end of this sock and then I'm going to knit to the middle of the other sock and mark the stitch in the same way. Knit the stitch and then mark it. Um, that is super important. <laughs> that you knit the stitch and then mark it, otherwise you're marking the row below. So I'm going to knit here to the middle and then when I've knit the middle stitch I'm going to mark it and then I'm going to carry on knitting all the way back round again and then I'll be back again. Okay, I've gone all the way round, so now I've got a marker at the beginning of the row below and a marker in the middle of the row I've just knit and that's only on this side, this is only we're marking where we're going to put the heel. On the back it was just plain knitting. So now I'm going to knit another row and when I've knit this row on this side, on the heel side of the sock, so I'm going to knit all the way to the end, this whole entire row, and then I'm going to put a marker in the last stitch after I've knit it, at the end of this row. I hope that's clear. Um, another thing to say, I've chosen to put my heel in the middle of my, um, sorry the dogs are barking, 
I've chosen to put my heel in the middle of my stripe for aesthetic reasons. There's also a practical reason. If you're knitting scrappy and you're changing yarns, make sure that where you set your heel, you've got a couple of rows either side. With, you know, you're within the same yarn. Don't change yarns where you're going to set your heel because then where you've got your tail sewn in and so on, it might all come unraveled when because we're going to make an opening here to put the heel in. I hope that's clear. So set your heel in a good solid piece of knitting all with the same yarn, or, you know, a good few rows. The same thing applies when you come to sew your ends in. Don't sew them in across this row that we've marked because that row will be removed. Okay, so I've knit the last stitch. I'm going to put a stitch marker in there. In that last stitch that I knit. Come here, fiddly thing. And um, then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other sock. Knit right across and then mark the last stitch. And then um, there's nothing else to, well there is obviously other things to be done, nothing else complicated to be done. Then all you do is you just keep on knitting until your sock is as long as you want it to be without the cuff. And for me, in general, from this point where I'm putting the heel, I make the leg the same length. So you can, I just keep folding my sock in half as I'm knitting, like this. So from the heel, imagine there was more sock here. I just keep folding it in half until it reaches just before the toe box. Do you see? Just there. So I make the leg of my sock this length again. Um, with my stripes, that's going to be easy to gauge because I'm just going to knit the same number of stripes going up. That's just how long I like them. So you can just go away and you can do that. You can just knit away until your sock is as long as you want it, minus a couple of inches of cuff. Um, so I've knitted the, my, the body of my socks and they are now, the leg part is now the same length, probably have to turn them that way, um, is now the same length as the foot part. Um, and then I've knitted from up, from there up towards the top. And if I fold them at the heel line, they're the same length as the foot minus the toe. I mean, you know, they can be any length you like, but this is the length I like um, to make them. So now I'm going to use the same colour as I used for my toe. Again, it doesn't have to be. And um, I'm going to knit some rib for the cuff. Now I like to knit the cuff the same length as the toe. Just gives a bit of structure to otherwise scrappiness. Um, so I've still got my two strands of, I'm going to use the same colour wool. Um, so I'm just going to join it the same way that I did before. I've got the tail of my previous colour. Exactly the same joining I do. So I do two stitches with the old colour to just to get it round the corner. And then um, join in the new colour leaving a tail of six inches or so. Just knit it. And then I put my needle in to make the next stitch, drop the tail of the new colour. And I get the tail of the old colour and bring it over the top. And then knit over it. And then I do this thing, I lift it onto the needle, knit over it, let it go down, knit over it again. And if your tail's too short or it's awkward around your finger, you can just flip it up and down like that. And I just do that for an inch or so. Now you'll see that I'm not knitting rib straight away because I'm joining a new colour. If you knit rib straight away where you're doing knit and purl, the purl stitches, you'll end up with a little bump or line of the old colour on the front of your work. So I always just do one round first, plain knit, when I'm joining a new colour and then I want to do the rib. So that's enough of knitting that in. So I'm just going to knit a complete round, join the colour on my other sock as well. And just knit one complete round with my rib colour. Okay, so I've knit one complete round and I'm back to the beginning and I've got my two stitches in my old colour that I knit. Um, so I always, or nearly always, do knit two, purl two rib. So these first two stitches will be knitted, so there won't be the problem with the purl bump. If you are going to do a knit one, purl one rib, 
and obviously your second stitch will be a pearl and you'll have a bump on the front. So you could either say, well, it's one little bump of the old colour, never mind, or you could do knit three and then pearl one, knit one, pearl one, and then on the next round start your knit one, pearl one, you know, pearl this one. I hope you understand what I'm saying. just depends whether a little pearl bump of that would bother you or not if you wanted to do knit one, pearl one. Um, the other thing is you can also knit your ends in when doing knit one, pearl one, but you have to sort of bring your yarn back and forth um, when you do the pearl. So I never bother, I just leave it and sew it, sew it in up and down. You know, with the ones I've knitted in, I then, if you remember in part one, I then just, and I'm not now doing my pearl, um, <laughs> I, um, I, I knit them in one way and then I just threaded them back through with the darning needle the other way. Um, so I've knit two, now I need to pearl two. Um, so I would just, with my darning needle, you know, weave them in one way and then the other way. So pearl two, whoops. Um, the tension in that's a bit funny because it's the tail, just pull it back up a bit. Knit two, and I'm just going to do that. Knit two, purl two, until my cuff is the same length as my toe, or however long you want it. Um, and then I'll be back to show you the cast off. Um, so I think that's clear. I think that's clear enough. Purl two, knit two. You need some kind of rib at the top, obviously, for it to be stretchy. Um, but you could do knit one, purl one, you could do knit three, purl one, you know. I like knit two, purl two. Okay, so I'll be back in a bit when I've knitted my cuffs to show you how I do a, a stretchy cast off. Actually, I'll just come back to say that if you're not used to knitting in the round, you know I talked before about always making sure your working yarn comes over the top of the needle. If the next stitch is a purl, which here I now need to purl to, you need to make sure that your working yarn comes under the needle. So do you see it's coming under towards me? And then I can pull that one out. And then it's there ready for me to purl. If I had it coming over the top, then I would do a yarn over in principle and make an extra stitch. So I just wanted to come back and point that out, in case you didn't know. Okay, so I'll go on with my cuffs and then I'll be back. Sorry, one other final thing to say. Um, when you're deciding on your rib pattern, it needs to be, you need to have a number of stitches that is divisible by that pattern. So a knit two, purl two is a four stitch repeat. So your, the total number of your stitches needs to be divisible by four. Um, if you've got an even number of stitches that isn't divisible by four, then knit one, purl one will work. I've got 44 stitches, so I can do my, my knit two, purl two. And I hope that's all I've forgotten <laughs> for now. Okay, so I've finished my rib, which is now the same length as my toe. I mean, that's just arbitrary, really. I just like the proportions, you know, you know, you know. So now I'm going to cast off, bind off. Um, there's many different ways to do it. You must choose a stretchy way, I think I said earlier in the series, because you need to be able to get your foot through, obviously. Um, the most popular way seems to be something called Jenny's Exceedingly Stretchy Bind Off, something like that, which is fine, you know, I've tried it, but um, I just prefer the process of this way. So I do with this, um, get my yarn coming over the top, because I'm starting with a knit stitch. So I knit the first stitch just normally and then I knit the second stitch because it's a knit and then I put my needle through the two stitches from left to right and towards the front so in effect this needle's now through the back loops and then I knit two together through the back loop and let it fall off and I don't pull that super tight and then the next stitch is a purl, so I purl it. And then I purl through the back loop. So I'm bringing my needle tip through the front of the two stitches. Sorry, like that on top, because I need to purl. And then I purl through the back loop. Again, quite loosely. The next stitch is a purl, so I purl. And the same thing again, I get my needle tip through the back loops 
and then I purl off the next stitch is a knit again so I put my yarn back to knit and I knit and then I grab the two stitches through from left to right with my needle behind now because I'm going to knit. So basically if it's a knit stitch you knit and then you knit two together through the back loops like a so. And if it's a purl stitch, you purl and then you purl two together through the back loops. Okay, so whether you've done knit, knit one purl, one rib, or whatever, it's the same. If it's a purl, you purl, if it's a knit, you knit. And then you just work them either purl or knit to try not to split your yarn, Catherine, through the back loops. So I hope that's clear. You can obviously rewind and watch that as many times as you want. So I'm going to go on and um, cast these both off and then I'll just come back briefly to show you what I do at the end. Okay. Um, I've just come back to say that when you get to the end of one side of your sock you'll obviously have one stitch left. So that's the stitch from the first sock and it's just hanging there. And as you work it sometimes pulls out, you know, long but doesn't matter. You can just tighten it up. So now I've got to the end of the second, the first side of the second sock. So all I do then is I turn as normal, um, like that, and then um, get my needles right. So I pull my front needle through. Whoops, come on, like that. And then I need this stitch to come round here. So um, what I do is I just push it onto the front needle, do you see like that? And then pull that through and then just pop it back because it's already worked. And then snug that up again and um, I'm ready to go on. Okay, so that's how I just deal with that extra stitch. Um, so I'll finish this other side casting off and then I'll come back and show you what to do at the end. Okay, so I've already cast off the first one. And so here's the second one and I've got one stitch left on my needle. So I just pull that loop up a little bit, take the needle away and I cut it off leaving about a six inch or so tail. Um, and then I just pull that tail through that big stitch. Now if you can see this, the stitch is coming out this side of that loop there. So I want to come in through from that direction. I don't want it, you know, twisted round or anything because that'll make an extra bump. So just pull that stitch, get hold of the tail, and then pull it through. And then you'll see you've got this weird thing going on here at the end. Um, but we're going to sort that out by sewing. So I'll get my knitter's sewing needle and thread my tail on. And then, I hope you can see, so then if you look where you begun, you see the first proper stitch, which is that, that V shape on the top there. So what I do is I come through both legs of that underneath it, I hope you can see what I'm doing, like that and let that lay, don't pull it too tight, but just make sure it lays kind of, you know, nicely and neatly. And then I come back through the last proper stitch, which is this one here, which is a bit loopy doopy as well, but you know, and just snug it up. And there, apart from my slightly loopy stitch, which I can squish into place, you will see that it's a pretty neat join. And then you need to sew that end securely in. Um, so I just turn the cuff inside out a little bit. And then I go down a few of these um, knit stitches on the back. Just a little way down, I sort of weave in and out. Because this is where it's the most inclined to come undone, you know, when you're get pulling it on and off. And then I come back up against the line, sort of through the next row of those little bumps, being careful not to go right through to the other side. Like I said earlier, you can just have a look to make sure your needle's not visible on there. 
and I find that weaving up and down over a short area, so I go down again, is the most secure way. And also, like I said before, if you go through your yarn here and there, it's no bad thing, because um, it sort of holds it more securely. Do you see, do you see? So now I've gone up and down three times, and now I'm going to just really be sure that this tail's well sewn in. So I might just weave through a few of those pearl bumps on the back of there, if I can get my needle in. Just down into there somewhere, well down, well down into the into the um, into the cuff, and then I might just come across that way. It's just changing directions rather than going in one direction is the key. And I probably do more than strictly necessary, but um, I'd rather do more than less. And a few people have said in the comments of the earlier videos about sewing in ends. I highly recommend doing it as you go along if you're doing scrappy. Because otherwise you have that kind of, again I'm going to cut leaving about half an inch or so of tail, just to give it room to settle. Um, yeah, because otherwise you have that kind of um, success, you finished your sock and then you've got five billion ends to sew in. So all I've got to sew in here is my starting end, and I didn't sew in where I joined my cuff. So I've got those, those ends there as well. So I'll sew those in. Um, and then that's all my ends sewn in apart from when I come to make the heel. And if I just show you this with the bind off, tuck you in a minute, you see it's quite stretchy, but I also think it looks quite neat. Um, and it doesn't, it splays a little bit, this is called splaying when it doesn't sit straight like that. It splays a little bit, but it doesn't splay as much as some stretchy bind offs. I just, you know, I find it's stretchy enough and neat and so on and I and I prefer working it but you know obviously if you've a uh, seasoned toe up sock knitter and you have another bind off that you like then carry on using it so all right so there we have a tube with no heel um, we've got the markers for the heel there um, so the final part will be next Friday and then we will put the heel in and then we'll have some finished socks so I hope that's um, useful to you, maybe some parts of it, all of it, whatever. Um, many people have been watching and saying, although they're not a knitter and no intention of being a knitter, they have enjoyed, they found it interesting, so that's great as well. Um, so I'll see you next week for putting the heel in. Bye-bye.